Hey there, everybody. Ooh, let's see if we can get the iPad working right. This is my son, Tig. He's going to do the Facebook Live with us today. We are going to talk about, I've got my computer open over here so I can tell you what I intend to tell you in my little video. So we're going to position the iPad where you can see me and I can see my notes. Welcome to the Ask Dr. Callahan Thursday edition of the Facebook Live. Today, we are going to talk about 15 common math hurdles that you can avoid in your coming math year. They're common things. We're going to go through them really quickly, and we'll um, tell you what you can do instead. The first one is show, don't teach. Um, and this is the idea that, you know, you telling a student to take good notes, they're often going to think that they know it, especially if you tell them something that's intuitive. And so they may not, you know, they may not write it down. They may not highlight it. I know a lot of my students don't get a lot of benefit from reading the textbook first. They actually get more benefit from going and reading through the examples and going through that stuff actually after they've tried homework because it's only after they've tried the homework that they realize maybe they didn't understand it like they thought they did. Mommy can't talk with you singing. <laughs> so, um, so that's, that's number one is that sometimes you, you don't have to follow that exactly. Number two, um, grades don't matter as much as effort does. Now, obviously, we want our kids to make A's and not F's, but that's really rather arbitrary. I mean, think about it. The whole concept of a grading system is something that we've applied to education. It, it doesn't mean very much outside of that. So when you're looking at your kids and you're preparing them for the future and certainly for college or for real life that high school students love to ask you about is when will I use this in real life? Well, the real life skill they're going to use most in high school is if they learn to apply their effort to learning and not so much to getting grades. I've worked with students who, you know, when they could make a C in math class, that was as good as an A for them. Math was very, very hard for them. They had to overcome a lot of obstacles to make that C. And when I was working with those kids in particular, that's when I learned. That's when I learned that it was it was better to ask students to give their best effort and to find a way to reward them for trying, reward them for studying, um, reward them for not being lazy and help them to learn the difference between putting in good effort and getting an A. They're, they're not the same thing and grading systems will sometimes set you back. So just pay attention to that. The grades are arbitrary. In our homeschool, we don't even, we don't even have them. Now this is just me at home with my two kids. We don't have them. I don't judge my son on a letter grade. I do have to turn them in. Um, but I do them. I don't tell him about them. So he's not working to earn a letter. He's working to be a smarter person, um, to be somebody who is intelligent and educated. And I'm sure that will morph as he gets older and the way we apply that will be different. But for you guys, try to instill that in your kids, that the expectation is that they give their best, not that they earn an A. Um, let's see. You're singing to all of the people on Facebook. <sighs> do, do, do. Oh, um, I wanted to point this out. Number three was, <laughs> I wrote it in my notes as pride goeth before a stupid person. And I think I wrote this when I was talking to my students because they would not come and ask questions when they didn't know something. They would sit there at home in their math education, missing problems, not understanding what was going on, but they wouldn't ask. They wouldn't say, hey, I don't understand this, or hey, I need help with this problem, or I'm not sure how to do this. And I've dealt with parents who wouldn't say, I don't know how to do that, because they felt like they needed to know how to do high school math. And I, I want to just point out that asking questions is what smart people do, because it's stupid to sit still and not know something, but be too prideful to go and get help. 
So pay attention to that. Um, when you have a high school student that says, I know that whole chapter, I don't need to review for the test. Say, okay, don't, that's a battle. I give you full permission to not fight. Say, okay, here's your test. And then have them take it. And they will either fail it or it will open up areas where maybe they need to study more. Um, it doesn't hurt anybody. Um, sometimes let your teacher be, let your student be the teacher. Um, it's absolutely true that, can you, can you see him karate chopping the, the desk? Does mommy talk like this all the time? I do, don't I? He's doing this. Yeah. I talk with my hands. I'm from the South. It's what we do. Let your students be teachers. Um, it's absolutely true that you learn best when you teach. And this is actually a documented study habit is to teach the material you want to learn, even if you're just teaching it to a blank wall. I used to line in college, I would line up stuffed animals and I would teach my test material to the stuffed animals because when you're teaching them, even if you're pretending that they're asking you questions, that process helps you learn the material better. So it's often not only a great way for the kids to study, um, but it helps them demonstrate what they know in a different way because you do ask different questions when you teach than when you're the student. Um, when you're sitting down with students, pay attention to their tells. Now, I'm not talking poker games here. I'm talking sometimes students will chew on their pencil or when they're writing down their homework, they will pick the pencil up at the point at which they're confused. Or maybe they'll say things like, I don't understand, but hardly ever. Usually you'll say, work this problem. They'll be sitting there and they'll get like halfway through and they'll stop. Or maybe they'll sigh. Or maybe they'll shift in their seat or pause in the middle of a, of a problem. All of these things can be tells where you as the teacher or the parent have the opportunity to say, do you have a question? You look like you might be confused. Can I help you? And then, you know, that way that gives them the opportunity to respond and say, I'm stuck. And my, my students, when I work with my students, I have to teach them this process a lot of times. I actually have to verbally say, you know, it's okay to ask questions. <laughs> you have to say, it's okay to ask questions. It's okay to say, I'm stuck. And sometimes I'll even remind them and say, you know, I'm sitting here with you to help you with your math, but I'm not a mind reader. So if you have... Okay, you can sit with me, but you gotta quit singing. If you have questions, you're gonna have to say out loud, you know, I need help, or I'm stuck, because if you're not communicating with me, then I'm gonna assume that you understand it. And sometimes when you tell the student and you frame it as like, these are the rules of me helping you, is you have to tell me when you need help, that'll encourage them to ask questions when they get stuck also. Um, remind your students to go slowly. Students love to be finished, so remind them that it saves more time out of their day to get it right the first time than to go so fast that they end up having to redo it three times. Um, make it okay to, oh no, Ember 8, oh I like this one, it says laugh at people's mistakes. And what this means is, have you ever seen those bridges where the engineering was off, so instead of the bridge meeting like it's supposed to, it's like this? Nobody's going to be able to cross it? Well that's a math problem. It, in the literal sense of the word there. Here, play with this guy and be quiet. And it's uneven. So that's math not working. That's somebody rounding to the wrong place or trying to get their problem done so fast that they didn't solve it exactly. All of these things where, you know, you grade right answer only and students will ask you, does it have to be exactly right? I got 13 and a half. Why can't I just put 14? That's a great opportunity to pull up some of those bridges and be like, you know, they were only half a foot off here, but we can't use the bridge this way. Stuff like that. You can search on Google. And I gave you that so you'd be quiet. And instead, the rhino is now roaring at us. It's not a dinosaur. It's a rhinoceros. Um... Oh, this is fun. Do the math activity where they never use math. Challenge your students to go 24 hours without using math. Um, not any numbers of any kind at all. Um, that's usually very illuminating as far as how many times um, you use math, especially if you can't get in the car, because if you don't use math, 
then the car doesn't run. You can't cook dinner because you can't measure things. You can't get dressed because you can't, you know, the volume of your clothing and, you know, it gets very, very complicated, very fast. Most of my students don't make it an hour. Um, oh, it's okay to ignore the syllabus. The primary, um, the first and primary exercise in math is that your students understand. So you want to go at the pace that makes sense for them. The syllabus is there to be your guide, but by all means, stop when you're frustrated. Um, work on math regularly and consistently, but don't work so long that they get tired and don't be afraid to ignore the book um, on days that your student just doesn't want to learn math that day. You know, it's 180 days of math over the whole year. There are 350, oh, I can't even think, 356 days in a year, 352, I don't remember, over 300, a lot. And 180 isn't very many of them, and that's the point. Moving on, because I teach math. Oh, and don't worry about cumulative. This is number 11, in case you're wondering. So we've got four more. Number 11 is don't worry about being cumulative. This frustrates me so much. You'll you study something at the beginning of Algebra 1, and then an entire nine months later, you're at the end of Algebra 1, and parents will freak out that their child doesn't remember exactly everything that was covered in Chapter 1 without looking. Like, they'll go, no, no, remember Chapter 1 without looking back at Chapter 1. Oh, my gosh. Albert Einstein is quoting as saying he doesn't memorize anything he can look up. And I'm pretty sure we can agree that he is a very smart person. So don't memorize anything that you can look up. That's what educated people do. Being able to look up what you need is just as important as having it memorized. In fact, it's more important to be able to apply the formula to look it up and know what to do with it than to just have them memorized all the time. Memorizing them doesn't do very much, which brings me to number 12, which is don't throw out your algebra book. When you finish algebra one and you go into ge um, geometry, trig, and calculus, keep that algebra book because that referencing what you did back in algebra, you're going to keep doing that as you move forward in your course. You're going to say, oh, I need that algebra formula and I don't remember it. So hang on to your algebra book so that you can go back and look that up. Number 13 is that calculus is a good course. Um, I'm just going to leave that there, but your kids will be so much better prepared for college and especially STEM-based majors in college if they take Calculus 1 in high school. We'll talk more about that later, but that's number 13. Number 14 is Algebra 2 with Trig is the same thing as Pre-Calculus. Um, it's the trigonometry that elevates Algebra 2 to Pre-Calculus. Once you've taken pre uh, trigonometry, you're ready for Calculus 1. So don't let that word fool you. A lot of parents think, oh, I can't go from Algebra 2 with Trig to Calculus 1 because that's too big of a leap. No, it's not too big of a leap. It's semantics. Algebra 2 with Trig and Pre-Calculus are the same course. Or they, they should be if you have a good Algebra 2 with Trig course. Um, and then number 15, and the last one for today, is don't let your fear hold back your children. Um, and I think some of these are ideas that I'm going to talk about on future Facebook Lives because I could definitely go into more depth about this. But I'll briefly mention this one here, and it's the idea that um, if you don't like math or if you're scared of Calculus 1 because you personally wouldn't want to take it or because you didn't take it or because you think you can't support them in that class, don't transfer that to your children. Be very careful about encouraging them to be able to do anything that they want to do. Kind of, not that doesn't sound quite right, not like anything. I really want to jump off a cliff, Mom. You should say no to that. But I mean, like, if they think they want to go into a STEM-based major in college, and I've seen students, actually I have friends of mine, who wanted to go into aerospace engineering, but they didn't because their family structure told them that they didn't know math well enough. And then they became adults, and they hadn't gone into this field that they loved. And it was all because of their personal network in high school wasn't very mathy and so what they were interested in got snuffed out and it became this real regret that this adult had so if you don't like math try to and not tell them <laughs> because you want to encourage them if they're into math we definitely need more engineers in this world and we need people who have the skills to make a bridge even I know I really appreciate the people who can make a bridge even and 
you know, and I don't know how to do that. And I want my students to grow up and become those people who make those real kinds of changes in the world, and I'm sure that you guys do too. So as a tip, whether they audit a class in college, get involved with a cooperative, take an online class, or get help from homework help, us, we do that. Whatever you need to do to encourage your kids, if they want to go into Calculus 1, please, please let them consider it. It's the best choice they could make for their senior year to get ready for a STEM-based major in college. So, now that we're finished with today's Facebook Live, of all of these 15 things, which one would you like most to hear about more in depth? Put a comment right down there. I can see it. Ooh, there's the comment button right there. If you click it, if you click that little comment button and tag us and say, you know what, I'd really like to know more about this, then I will review all of those and the one that gets the biggest vote um, will be what we talk about next Thursday. So be sure you let me know about that. Thank you for joining me today on the Thursday Facebook Live for Ask Dr. Callahan. I've loved talking with you guys today and I will see you next week. Bye-bye. I'll say bye if I can find the button that turns it off. There it is.